G'day everybody, what I'm going to show you this afternoon is how to pull apart the individual valve bodies uh, on uh, an automatic transmission. This is from a ZF5 HP19 transmission. Uh, before you start to do any of this stuff, um, you need to be prepared for lots and lots of little bits that come out. You uh, really need to be careful with uh, ordering all the pieces, making sure everything gets bagged, uh, and that everything goes back in the same order uh, that it came out in. So my advice to you is to have your camera handy, take lots and lots of photographs of every single little piece that comes out, uh, where it came from and its orientation and the order that it actually came out because there are lots and lots of bits that are slightly different that look kind of exactly the same and it will be very easy to get mixed up and for your transmission and not work correctly afterwards. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this on just the two smaller of the two, uh, or the two smallest valve bodies. The larger two are pretty much exactly the same. They've just got uh, a much larger number of pieces. So, uh, the first type that we have uh, inside here, there are pistons and springs, etc., that make everything work. Uh, these have got these lugs on the end, so all I need to do is just push those down a little bit, and then I can just pull it out from there. Now once, this is all under spring pressure, so making sure that you have your thumb over the end as we pull that out, and it yep, pops uh, that spring, and there's actually a piston in here as well. Sometimes the piston will be at the end and the spring will be at the other end, it just depends on uh, which component that you're looking at. Give that a little bit of a tap. Sometimes they're a bit stubborn and they don't want to come out. Uh, if you just get some compressed air and blow in here at the end, and that will come out nicely. Uh, each of these pieces is anodized aluminium, so it should be this nice dull grey colour. There shouldn't be any wear on it, etc. Uh, it should just look a nice um, consistent colour. To put these back in, uh, obviously they need to be lubricated before they go back in. You know, push that in with the, the spring. Now some of these, especially on the larger bodies, have multiple components which is why it's essential to make sure that everything's in the correct order. Now once you get to here, the best way I've found to do it is to actually use a small socket that's actually slightly smaller than that spring or the component that you're pushing in. And what I'm going to do, it's a bit difficult to actually do this and show on the camera as well, but I'm going to push that in and then I'm going to slot that down. And push that down and then just again push in the tab a little bit so I can push it all the way home. Uh, in addition to that there are some components that have these little clips uh, maybe I'm not sure if you can see that there but there's a little clip that actually holds in uh, the multiple components because there might be some springs up here and it's actually holding another piece in place there. To pull these out it's pretty simple uh, what you need to do though is just use a small screwdriver uh, but make sure you protect it. We're going to lever this out but we don't want to be scratching the surface. So I'm just going to use an old rag and I'm just going to lever that up. That will just pull straight up and out. I won't pull it up and out uh, just because save me pulling apart the whole piece. But these are actually orientated in a specific direction. Uh, so make sure you take photographs of this whether it goes that way or that way on the way back in. Okay, so that's that type with these tabs on the end. The other type we've got is instead of having the tabs, it's just got a big piece that bolts on the top. Uh, the difficulty with this is that when you pull this off, everything comes out at the one time. The nice thing about the other type is that you can just do it one at a time, take a photograph, uh, and then move on after cleaning the pieces, etc. So I'll just remove all of these. Now these are all under spring pressure, so when you remove them, uh, you need to do it nice and evenly. I'm just going to pull out the ones at the end first. And then, generally easiest to hold it in so you hold the spring press yourself. Uh, 
It's a little bit to do when you difficult to do when you're trying to do this for a camera. And now we're just going to gently allow everything to pop out. And now you can see that we've got a number of springs and pistons um, that need to uh, be removed individually, etc. Take your photos uh, and check out the components. Uh, once you pull all those out there, in this one case here, there's a clip like we saw before that you would need to remove uh, and remove that additional component up the end. To put it back on, found the best way to do it is after you've put all the components in in their correct position, plonk this on and then just compress it yourself with your hands, making sure everything is lined up correctly. and then just screw one of these in so it holds all the tension and then we can put in the other pieces And once you've got it nicely down flat, it's pretty easy to put in the remainder of the screws. Obviously they would need to be torqued, I think the spec is, it's either 6 or 10 newton metres, I'm not sure, I'd have to look up in the manual. Right, I hope this helps.